Sean of Grim Parts Co. here, and today I've got to do a bunch of little service items on this FXR, so I thought it'd be a good opportunity to show you guys how to change your clutch cable real quick. Sometimes it's easier to remove the exhaust system. I've got a couple other things to do, so I am going to go ahead and take the exhaust system off. We're going to be pulling this cover here, and I'll show you the process of swapping out your cable. All right, to do the job of changing clutch cable, you're going to need a new clutch cable, transmission in cover gasket, a big and a small set of snap ring pliers, some Allen, some open end wrench. I like to use a, a torque wrench, a little molly lube for your pens, and then some red line transmission oil for your transmission. So we've loosened all the head bolts and the bolts back here and this little pain in the ass under here. Be mindful of the heads, the cam cover, all that stuff. You don't scratch it up. Take it off and chuck it on the bench. Take your uh, clutch adjuster loose. Part of the reason why we're replacing this cable is when I did that, the, the actual adjusters broke. So I'm not going to be able to loosen the cable up on this one. Um, but normally that's what you do. Just go ahead and loosen this up and so you can get it to be free up here. Once you loosen your clutch cable adjuster and back it off, you're going to want to take your snap ring. You're going to need a little small set of snap ring pliers and get in here and take your snap ring off. Keep your hand on it so you don't lose it and put it someplace you don't lose it. And then you just simply push up and slide your pen out. And this is with all the tension off of this, so typically it comes out pretty easy. This perch has seen better days, so it's a little bit hammered. So anyway, we'll just get the pin out like that. And then at that point, you can go ahead and just slide the whole lever off, and then just push the plastic pin out, and then you've got your clutch cable free on this end. After you've loosened your clutch cable and stuff, it's a good idea to go ahead and loosen the jam nut on your clutch side. Um, I just have this offset wrench, you pop the nut loose there, then just go ahead and back the Allen uh, out. After you're all back together, you're going to do a clutch adjustment. We've actually done another video showing you how to adjust your clutch properly. I just go ahead and refer to that for that procedure. So we got the uh, clutch cable loose, it's out of the perch and the lever's off on that end. On this end, before I start taking the bolts off of here, a couple things I like to do. I like to go ahead and get my uh, filler plug out of the way. It's kind of one of those little items that can snap. It just makes life easier if you just go ahead and remove that. And then the other thing I like to do is when this thing's already tightened in here, go ahead and bust your clutch cable where the thread's here loose. Uh, it's a lot easier to do than when you got it off in your hand. So then from here, we're gonna go ahead and take the Allen heads off. I like to break them, and this goes for any aluminum cover. Just crack a little turn here and evenly go around until you take the tension off and then you can spin them all the way out. Normally, uh, I would say drain the transmission case. This bike's getting a full service, so I've already done that. So if you're doing this, it's a good idea to go ahead and drain your tranny case. And no matter what, you're still gonna get some residual, so I have a little pan here to catch that. Sometimes if the gaskets are old and the it hasn't been off for a while, it may need a little bit of a tap. And then you see you're still going to get some residual. This one's already been drained. So I just kind of set that in the pan and we're going to pull this big snap ring out. As with any snap ring, when you go to remove it, you're going to want to put some safety glasses on. These things can pop out here and smack you in the eyeball. You're going to need a stout set of snap ring pliers. Just slip them in, squeeze them together and pull them out evenly and release the tension. Then this is your ball and ramp assembly. There's going to be three balls under here. Just be mindful of those. If you spin this over, there's a notch. You can find the flat spot in this and that comes right off. Then go ahead and disconnect the, the little connection piece and then just set that off to the side. Go ahead and take the bottom of the ball and ramp assembly out. Now remember, we went ahead and loosened this up already so it should just start to spin freely. And then I usually go ahead and clean this up in the solvent tank, get it all clean before I go back together. And then you're gonna wanna go ahead and remove your gasket here, clean it up and get it prepped for reassembly. Sometimes like on this bike where the gasket's old and crappy and it's just stuck on, nice sharp razor blade carefully. It's probably about the best way to go about getting this off. So we've got everything cleaned up, uh, end cover's clean here. We're ready to go back together. Um, this is kind of simple, but I just go ahead and say it anyway. I like to lube up this little O-ring. Typically, if you buy a new cable, it'll come with a new O-ring that'll seal here. Don't forget to put this on, because you can. I have. I think everyone has. So anyway, make sure you get the O-ring on there. I put a little bit of lube on it. And then what you want to do is line this up and get this spun on here. This can be a little tricky, so just be patient. We're going to do a final assembly on our ball and ramp setup. The tab fits in the slot there. Then you're going to want to go ahead and take and put your uh, little cable holder on this end, find the flat spot here, upside down, and then once you get it like that, then spin it around so you're looking like that. 
Then go ahead and set your ball and on, I'm gonna set your ramp assembly on top there. I like to have the sharp edge on this facing up. So just once again, safety glasses on this procedure and then put your snap ring in place. There's a bunch of gaps in this, this slot. I like to put it so that my gap is on a complete slot and not in the middle on one of these areas here where it could be. I just feel like you get better support that way, so that's the way I run it. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and use a nice new gasket. Uh, some models have little dowel pins to hold these in place. This one does not. So we'll just go ahead and kind of set this up here like so and use the bolts to kind of get things going. And refer to your torque manual for torque spec on this. I do like 108 inch pounds. I've got a digital torque wrench and I'm kind of a stickler for torque and stuff. So I like to torque almost everything. Thing about torque wrenches and on surfaces like this, puts even pressure across the surface, which helps reduce leaks and potential for leaks. Last but not least, while you're here, remember we put this together and uh, we just finger tighten this. So while you're here, go ahead and snug this guy up. Okay, so just kind of carefully route your cable in place. So use a little molly grease to lube up your pins. Slip your pin, your clutch pin in, and then pull that out and install your cable. Then take your metal pin, that's lubed and stick it through. And then last but not least is your snap ring. Never hurts to have a little safety glasses. Snap ring in the eyeball. Never change your day there, it's not a good idea. Okay, now you got your clutch cable all installed now. You're gonna need to do a clutch adjustment and a cable free play adjustment. There's another video that we have showing you how to do that. Don't forget to fill your transmission back up. We use Redline only and Big Twin Transmissions, uh, shockproof fluid. We have a link for that on our website, so check that out if you need some of that. Um, and then go ahead and reinstall your exhaust and anything else you may have taken off to get to your uh, transmission and cover.